Art, first of all, thank you for the time. Always appreciate talking to you. Good to be with you. And since you last met with media people, you've made a hire, and that hire was Arthur Smith. What did you see or what did the group see with Arthur Smith that made you think he was the right man for the job? You know, Arthur has uh, great experience, obviously, uh, as a coordinator in Tennessee uh, for a few years there, and then uh, as a head coach, uh, you know, that's great experience. And, uh, you know, just a, he just seemed like a good fit, and Mike was very comfortable with him, and uh, I think his offensive uh, mindset is, is what we're looking for, so we're, we're excited to have Arthur in the building. So I remember Mike Thomas' final press conference, he said it would be kind of a three-man search committee with you, Omar, and him. Was that how it worked out? Was it a group hire, or was it Mike's hire, which has typically been the case? No, it's Mike's hire. I mean, it's, look, the head coaches hire their coordinators, and, uh, you know, to the extent Omar and I could be helpful, we, we tried to be, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's Mike's hire. So he has a reputation of being a, a you know, run, first kind of guy, physical I know that's what you take pride in as an offense. How much of that can help a passing game with some young quarterbacks, knowing that if you get into good second and short or third and short, your passer should be at an advantage? Well, there's no doubt. If you can uh, have a, a strong running game as a foundation, uh, you know, it makes the, the passing game uh, that much better. And it uh, opens up opportunities in the secondary that uh, hopefully our young quarterbacks can take advantage of. Uh, how much of a role will he have in developing your quarterback, specifically Kenny Pickett? No, Arthur will have, uh, you know, that's, that's a big part of his role is, is helping our quarterbacks get better, helping Kenny take the next step. And uh, I know he's excited about it, and, uh, and we're looking forward to it. He shaved his mustache. Any significance there? Uh, <laughs> I can't comment on that. I don't, I don't know what the significance is of that. <laughs> Pickett, though, is going to be one of the guys that you obviously have a lot invested in. When you look back at this past season, was it sort of a missed opportunity given the late injury? You had made a switch at coordinator. He never really got a chance under those um, conditions you know, to take his game to the next level. We saw one game in Cincinnati where he did. Looking back, did that cost him some evaluation time on your behalf? Yeah, it, it was too bad. Kenny got hurt and couldn't, have, couldn't finish the season and, and uh, you know, was... Uh, you know, would have liked to have seen, you know, what he did down the stretch. Obviously, uh, the season before, he got stronger down the stretch. And so it would have been nice to see that. But, uh, hey, we, what, you know, what Mason came in and did was, was great, too. So, uh, you know, we wound up finishing the, the season strong with Mason and, and made, the, uh, made the playoffs. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the way things roll sometimes. Yes, you made the playoffs. Uh, unfortunately, a loss there. And, you know, it's been that way for several years. Mike's been here for a long time, 17 years. You guys are the model for stability. You have doubled down on the fact that Mike Tomlin is still your man. What makes you think he could be the head coach that can lead you to where you need to go? You know, when you see Mike's interaction with players in the building and, and uh, certainly the respect that particularly the veteran players have for him and th their belief in him, uh, you know, the, the, you know, Mike, Mike is, uh, is one of the best coaches in the league as far as I'm concerned, and we're, we're happy we have him. All right, as far as Pickett, the one thing that Mike did say in his final press conference also was this would be a huge, and he emphasized that word, huge year. How big does it have to be for you to believe that you have your quarterback of the future? Well, obviously, we want to see Kenny take the next step. Uh, look, the first two seasons, what we saw were not bad. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say that. I think uh, you know, he showed, showed himself to be a winner. He showed somebody that, that is... Uh, you know, can can bring a team back from behind and, and late in a game. So, you know, a lot of positives from Kenny in the first two seasons, and we just need to see him take the next step and uh, and, and really for the whole team to take the next step in terms of uh, having a, an effective and consistent offense uh, week in and week out. I was going to say, what would the next step look like from your point of view with him specifically? Well, the next step, uh, number one, would look like more points uh, <laughs> year, uh, week in and week out. So, uh, you know, just being a more effective offense, uh, can, you know, continuing to do some of the things we were able to do this year in terms of, uh, uh, you know, ball control and being able to, to run effectively, uh, but then add on top of that just, you know, scoring more touchdowns. Yeah, you see, it's interesting. You see a lot of good and a lot of inconsistencies. The one good that I've seen is his ability when the chips are down in the fourth quarter. So that's a, that is a characteristic that I'm, I'm sure you want to see. Yep. Why hasn't it been as consistent 
as you need it to be? Well, you know, I think he has been fairly consistent in terms of when, when we've needed him to, you know, to uh, lead us in a comeback. Uh, you know, that's been one of the strengths. And so, uh, you know, we just, just uh, you know, from, from time to time we've, we've gotten ourselves, uh, you know, in a hole and, and, you know, didn't start out uh, strong enough early in games. And so, you know, those things just, you know, being more consistent from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, uh, I think that's what we need to build on. Mason came in and after sitting around for a couple of years did a very effective job and the down the field game was alive and well which led to points. Uh, he is a free agent but you do have an opportunity to talk to him. Do you want to and what would you like with Mason Rudolph moving forward? Yeah certainly what Mason did down the stretch was impressive and uh, you know Mason's always been strong as a deep passer and that, you know, that's uh, one of the strengths of his game and uh, he showed that uh, you know, in the in the games he played, so uh, you know we've told Mason would would like to have him back, and uh, you know he is a free agent, so uh, you know we'll see. He, you know, he, he may have options too, but uh, you know we've kept the door open to, to continue those conversations. Even if he does, you still need more in your quarterback room. So, you guys have gone out of the box uh, recently and doing some things that really historically you haven't done. Would you be willing to make a trade for a current quarterback if the prop? You know the price was right in that kind of a situation. Well, you know, as we sit here in early February, we're not closing the door on anything. Uh, you know, we, we have a, uh, a lot of evaluations to go through, and and uh, you know we'll go through all the options and you know do what we need to do to to be better this coming season. Your run game was as good as it's been consistently. Uh, I mean, that's been one of the strengths of this team, and yet you have a situation coming up with fifth year options. I know, as you said, it's February. But I suspect you guys want the current situation to continue with those two. Yeah, I mean, we, we liked what we saw with uh, Najee and Jalen and, and want to continue that. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to have two backs like that who are uh, both effective, different styles, but both effective. And, uh, you know, it's too early to, to say much about their contracts, but, uh, but obviously we'll have them back this year and we, we hope into the future. So back to Arthur Smith, if there's one position or one player or two who you think he can help develop along the way. He's had a history with tight ends in Tennessee, even on that year where Derrick Henry was running the ball, you know, 2,000 yards. They had a 1,000-yard receiver plus John o. Smith. He seems to be pretty creative. Which, which area do you think he would help the most? You know, I think Arthur, number one, is, is going to have to impact the quarterback and, and Kenny in particular. So, uh, but you know, he, he look. He's he's been around a lot of a lot of football over the years and has great experience. And uh, you know, he'll uh, he'll make a decision on kind of where where the emphasis needs to be and and how we put our personnel in the best uh, you know best situations to be uh, successful. As of yesterday, uh, looks like you need a wide receivers coach. You know, people around here are always going to think of local guys, and Heinz Ward comes to mind. I know he was an intern here a while ago. He's had some experience. Is he a guy you'd like to be? back in your organization? You know, it, it's too early for me to say kind of, you know, who will fill that role. Mike and, and Arthur are, you know, looking at the uh, the options there, and uh, and I'm sure they'll do a good job filling the position. And, you know, we love Hines, uh, but, uh, you know, that that's going to be a, a decision that Mike and Arthur will have to, to make in the next, uh, you know, week or so probably. I heard you use the word urgency last week. Um, Define what urgency is for you and, and what needs to happen for people to respond to the urgency. Well, you know, I made the comment that, uh, you know, it, 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 for, for a lot of us who've been in the organization for a while, and I clu include Mike Tomlin in this, uh, you know, we, we are getting impatient. We, we want to take that next step. Uh, you know, we want to win playoff games and, and uh, go deep into the postseason. So, you know, we, we miss being part of that. And, and uh you know that's that's where the urgency is. We we need to get the, back to being the, you know, playing uh, football deep into January and, and hopefully February. Especially because you have some guys on the other side of the ball who have been here for a while. I, I assume you include them in it. T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, even Minka. No question. You know we we have uh, obviously a great core group of players on defense that, uh, you know we we gotta we gotta get those those guys deep into the postseason as well. They're they're just as hungry as everybody else. Omar Khan had his first draft, looked very promising, and on paper you have guys who stepped right in rather quickly. How encouraged were you by the people you saw from that draft class? 
I think Omar and his team did a great job last year. Obviously, uh, you know what we saw in the first year that rookie class was, uh, well, yeah, was good to see, and and some key positions that uh, we've got guys that hopefully are going to step in there and be a part of it for a long time now. So, uh, you know, we need to we need to repeat that this coming yeah. draft. How much of an asset was Andy Weidel in this whole process with Omar? A Andy's a great asset to Omar. You know, a Andy is a great football guy, and and. Uh, I think uh, the combination of Omar and Andy is a, is a good combination, and you know they've assembled a good team up there in our personnel department. So, uh, you know, we, we like where we are on that that side of the building. Now, a couple of questions aside from all of this current team, and that would be the draft. A lot of people are you know thinking Pittsburgh would be a perfect spot for an NFL draft. It's been around different cities. Um, how far are you in that process? Is it something you can see happening soon? I would say I'm optimistic about the draft coming to Pittsburgh in the near future. Uh, you know, we're in the process of putting uh, a bid together that we have to submit to the league soon, and uh, we're, we're hoping that we have a decision on that uh, you know, later this, uh, this spring, uh, hopefully by the May owners meeting, that uh, you know, the league will make a decision to bring uh, you know, one of the upcoming drafts to Pittsburgh. What kind of economic boom would that be for the city? You know, it'd be a great boom for the city. I mean, it would be the largest visitor event in the history of the city by far. Uh, and, and we, you know, we think that uh, the location of Pittsburgh being so close to so many other markets, in addition to uh, thousands of Steeler fans, would have thousands of fans from other cities here. So it would be, uh, it'd be a fantastic uh, time for the city, and, and as I say, probably the largest visitor uh, event in the history of the city. All right, this is also another anniversary. You guys seem to have one every year that's special, and this year would be the 50th anniversary of what is widely believed the most successful draft ever, one that probably won't be duplicated, even when you, you look at Donnie's shell, you know, when you have five Hall of Famers in it. What are your memories of that draft? And, and I don't know how old you would have been, um, <laughs> but you're, you were there watching it if you weren't involved in it. What do you think when you hear 74 draft? Yeah, well, I was around. I can't say that I had a hand in it, but I, uh, I certainly was uh, in the room for part, parts of the time then. I was in college still, and, uh, you know, uh, look, when, when we drafted Lynn Swan, you know, we, we thought we got a superstar right there in the first round, I'd say. Uh, you know, didn't know that we were drafting, uh, you know, three other, uh, you know, Hall of Famers that day, and, and then obviously brought in Donnie Schell uh, a little later, so just... Uh, you know, a remarkable group, uh, probably never to be duplicated, and, and uh, you know, really was the, uh, you could say, the finishing touch on the, on the team of the 70s. Uh, and so uh, great memories, and hats off to my Uncle Art and his team, that, and Chuck Knoll, who, you know, brought it all together that year. I was going to say, a lot of people believe, me included, that Art Rooney Jr. should be in the Hall of Fame based on that alone. Um, how much... You know, was this on him and his team to get this done the way it is? And I don't know if you felt it at the time. That you certainly couldn't have thought you had five Hall of Famers, but you probably felt pretty good about it. Well, you know, we, we came into that draft, I would say, feeling good about the team. I mean, there, there was no doubt the team was building, and, and, you know, we made the playoffs for the first time ever for, you know, two seasons in a row. And, and so no question, I think uh, everybody felt good about where we are at that, where we were at that point. But, uh, you know, as I said, that, that was the finishing touches on, you know, what became a team that, uh, you know, won four Super Bowls and, you know, was made the playoffs for, I think, eight straight years. And uh, just a, a remarkable group of, of men that, uh, you know, my Uncle Art and Coach Knoll and everybody, uh, Bill Nunn, you know, lots of great people in the room, uh, you know, pulling that together. Yeah, it was pretty remarkable. One final thing, and that would be, I, I sense you're, you're a guy, because I see you at a lot of events, you have your pulse on, you know, the, the fan base. And, and there's been a frustration with what we talked about earlier. How much do you hear that? How much do you respond to that kind of stuff? Well, number one, we have great fans, and, and we love how much they care about Steelers football and how much time they, they spend thinking about it and giving us their opinions on it. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, you know, I never complain about our fans and them giving their opinion. You know, we had great attendance at the games this year and, you know, great, great ratings on television this year. So, uh, you know, great attendance at away games. Just, you know, it was just uh, another great year for our fans to enjoy football and for them to really uh, show their support. Talk show.
You never know what you're going to get, right? <laughs> you never Those know what you're going to get. Coming in. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for the time, Art. Thanks, really appreciate Bob. it. Thank you.